Going live. Hello, folks. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Kazi's Classics, brought to you by Black Hat Comics and Rockin' Milpitas, your one-stop shop for all things superhero. Shop online at black-cat-comics.com. This is a show about classic comics, vintage comics from eras gone by. I'm your host, Mark Kazi. If you're interested in purchasing any of the books that we're going to be talking about tonight, open up another window, go to black-cat-comics.com, click on shop, click on Kazi's Classics, and when you hear me say, make it live, the book in my hand will magically appear on your screen, available for you to purchase. If you want to purchase that book, go through the whole process, put the book in your cart, check out, and get because if you just put it in your cart and Bob puts it in his cart and Bob checks out, he's going to get the book and you're going to be sad. So that's a little bit about how it works. If you aren't interested in purchasing any of the books that I'm uh, going to be talking about tonight, then just sit back, relax, and enjoy a conversation about classic comics. Tonight's topic is first issues, uh, one of the topics that every comic book fan loves. Uh, there are literally thousands of reasons to uh, buy a comic book, thousands of reasons to collect comic books, and just about every single one of those can be found in the first issue of a series. First issues are uh, we get introduced to characters, introduced to storylines, introduced to everything that is great about comics. And tonight I've got a stack of great first issues uh, that uh, show you a little bit about all of those things. Uh, first appearances of characters, uh, some of the top talent in the history of comics, all the things that make comics great. Because that's why they're Kazi classics, because they're awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, always like to start with uh, something super awesome, something super classic. This is Machine Man number one from way back in 1978. Machine Man, written and drawn by the all-time greatest Jack the King Kirby, writer and artist on Machine Man number one. That's a really sweet copy. Machine Man first appears in the 2000 AD comic adaption, if you know the movie, which of course you do because you're a comic book person. Uh, Jack Kirby did the adaption for the book, snuck in a brand new character called Machine Man, and he took off and he was really cool. Uh, of the million and one things that you can talk about about Jack Kirby, and we all know that there are a million and one things to talk about, it could be argued that of all his greatness, his very greatest greatness was in the 1970s, what he did over at DC with Commandy and the New Gods. Uh, and then he comes back to Marvel and does things like the Eternals that uh, everybody's getting ramped up about. And this cool book right here, Machine Man. So Jack the King Kirby doesn't get any more Kazi classic than a 1970s book written and drawn by the king. This one's just 25 bucks. Nice little warm up, nice little start. Like I say, always like to introduce the show with something by one of the all time, all times, and you don't get any more all time than the king. So let's go ahead and make it live. Machine Man, number one. Really nice copy. One thing, again, I'll say, one thing I look for when talking about grading in nice books is purples and yellows. Uh, deep purples and bright yellows really demonstrate the grade of a book color wise. Good stuff. Machine Man. Making it live. Somebody take that home. That's a classic book. Staying in our $25 range, as I say, I always like to start off uh, a little small and work up to the big ones. But this is a big one. I know it's Kazi's Classics, and we talk about Silver Age and Bronze Age and things. But this one is a uh, modern classic that's just become, boy, even more classic than ever. This is Captain America number one from 2005. Ed Brubaker, Steve Ding. This is a Kazi classic for a thousand reasons. One, if you know anything about me, if you've seen any video with me ever, you know Cap's my guy. What makes this book super, super special is a little guy called the Winter Soldier. Uh, this is the storyline, as you see there on the top, Out of Time. Out of Time is the storyline that uh, introduces the Winter Soldier, reintroduces Bucky, uh, and uh, 
the it's number seven that is popularly considered his first appearance, but he has a full on cameo in this issue uh, right at the beginning of the book. And you don't really understand until later on who the guy is in that tube. Uh, but anywho, this is really a modern, modern classic in, in every sense of the word. Now it's all over Disney Plus and is, uh, you know, part of the MCU and and all that kind of thing. Uh, but it's really, really the first issue of a great, great series. Uh, introduces the Winter Soldier, goes on into all the Civil War and Death of Captain America stuff. Uh, Ed Brubaker is incredibly awesome. The Steve Epting art that you can see on the cover there, second to none. Uh, I love, love, loved this series as it was coming out. And uh, I reread it periodically because because it's awesome. So if uh, you love Cap like I do, uh, if you uh, love Falcon and Winter Soldier, you just think Winter Soldier is cool. Like I say, this is a great book to pick up. Captain America number one from 2005. Do yourself a favor and uh, pick up the whole run. One thing, a little tip that I'll tell you, the House of M issue, I think it's either number eight or number 10, is not collected anywhere else. So there's quite a few really, really important keys in this modern run. This is one of them, uh, whichever one they're calling the first Winter Soldier, seven, I think. Uh, and like I say, that House of M number 10 uh, may not be on anybody's radar, but if you don't have the issue, you won't read that story anywhere. And it's a really, really great issue of Captain America. So let's go ahead and make it live. Captain America number one, 2005, Ed Brubaker, Steve Epting. Like I say, it's uh, obviously not a Bronze Age or Silver Age, but it's definitely a Kazi classic. Definitely an awesome vintage book from, from eras gone by. And like I say, with the popularity of Falcon Winter Soldier, just thought it's a good time to talk about this one a little bit. Um, and while we're on the subject of Falcon Winter Soldier, going to move on into our $50 bracket and show you a character that is known and beloved by everyone. This guy is Wolverine Volume 2, Number 1. First issue of his first ongoing series, Wolverine Volume 1, number one, is, of course, uh, the Frank Miller, uh, the first issue from the Chris Claremont Frank Miller miniseries. This is the first issue of the ongoing series. It's been kind of uh, undervalued and, and under the radar for a long, long time uh, because, obviously, it's not Hulk 181. Uh, it's not Frank Miller. But this book has become more and more popular, more and more awesome uh, year by year by year. And uh, now it's, I think, still pretty undervalued and is really cool. Thousand things to love about this book, aside from being the first issue of the ongoing series, aside from it being an awesome book uh, about everyone's favorite crazy Canadian. This book is written by Chris Claremont and drawn by John Basima. You should know either or both of those names. And if you don't know either or both of those names, then boy, you're in for thousands of treats. Uh, Google Chris Claremont, buy anything he ever wrote. Google John Basima and buy anything he ever drew. The Basima brothers are, are world famous and deeply, deeply loved by Marvel fans like me uh, and, and comic fans everywhere. And uh, you can kind of see why. The Basimas have a great style that is somewhere in between classic comics and just great art. And uh, one thing I always talk about in the subject of art is world building. And, and nobody builds a world with art like John Basima uh, from Conan, Wolverine, and on and on and on I could go. Uh, so like I say, first issue of the ongoing series, anything with Wolverine, anything by Chris Claremont, anything by John Basima. Oh, and by the way, Madripoor, you know what else takes place in a place called Falcon and Winter Soldier, a little... Uh, not so subtle nod to the future of the MCU incorporating X-Men stuff. If you are a super nerd like me, then you were like, oh my God, that's Wolverine. They're talking about a place where Wolverine goes. Uh, and if you're not a nerd like me, then it just went right over your head as one of those fictional names and of places. Uh, but I say it makes this book a little bit important. There's a reason that they reprinted this as one of the true believers. There's a reason this is the first issue of the first Wolverine epic trade. It's really, really important to the history of the crazy Canuck. So if you don't know much about this series, pick up this issue and uh, take off on a great ride. Uh, many of you will remember number 50, the cool die cut issue comes from this run. Lots and lots of great books come from this run. So let's go ahead and make it live. Wolverine, number one, first of the ongoing series. I have all of these guys up tonight as uh, 8.5. 
8.5 is the number I like to stop at uh, because I think when you put things at nine, you start um, inviting argument. And when you start putting, when you put things at like 9.2, uh, you, you invite debate. And I'm not really here to invite debate. These are really, really sweet, nice copies of books. Um, and it's uh, really more about the reading than about the grading. So I have them at 8.5. They're probably all a little nicer than that. Uh, so Wolverine number one, give that guy a good home, all-time great book. Got to get to a little uh, DC now, right? Haven't we? Uh, we've done a few Marvels. Now we want to see some some cool DC books. And in my opinion, nobody, well, not nobody. I'm a big Superman guy. Aside from Superman, the next coolest DC character in my book is this guy. This is Nightwing, volume two, number one. And again, uh, not his first appearance. Uh, but this is the first issue of the second run of the ongoing series. And there's a number of reasons that, again, make this book awesome. Uh, why am I not showing you volume one, number one? Well, because it's, uh, as Francie has been commenting, it's Mullet Nightwing. It's, it's, it's really, yeah. they're great books. They're great stories, but, 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 but trapped in the year that it was made with the big shiny gold medallion and all that kind of stuff. Of those books, but in this series, you start to see the Nightwing that we all know and love. You start to see uh, the the Dick Grayson on his own, not a Teen Titan, not a sidekick, uh, out there in, in Bloodhaven in New City, uh, becoming his own hero in his own right. And uh, there are very few things uh, more important to this character than this series. Uh, obviously, you could talk about Robin appearances and and uh, the Marvel Wolfman stuff in in, in uh, Teen Titans. That's where the character comes from. But from that point in this book, written by Chuck Dixon, all you Batman fans know Chuck Dixon. You Robin Nightwing fans know Chuck Dixon. Chuck Dixon took this character and and really elevated him and made him what he should be, uh, which is uh, somebody that grew up uh, under the cape of Batman. And uh, so it's just really action packed. Uh, cool new stories, new setting, new villains. Uh, again, this is just sort of where uh, Nightwing gets established as, as the premier hero that we know him to be today. Before this series, as I said, he was uh, a teen titan. He was a sidekick. He was a lot of things. Uh, but in this series, he becomes Nightwing, butt kicker of Bloodhaven. Uh, so this begins, uh, let's say, a whole new era for the character. And, and again, really one of my favorite, favorite DC characters. One of a lot of people's favorite D DC characters. So super key, uh, new number one, again, not necessarily uh, Silver Age or Bronze Age, but definitely a Kazi classic, definitely a, uh, an awesome vintage book from an era gone by. Love me some Nightwing. So let's go ahead and make it live. Love that book, love that whole series. Like I say, like a lot of these first issues, pick up the first issue, uh, absorb it into your soul, and then collect all the rest of them because it's a ton of fun. Uh, staying in the DC realm and staying in uh, maybe a little more of the modern times, but again, a super classic, a book that everybody wants. And again, some of my favorite DC characters, probably some of yours. This is Gotham City Sirens, number one. This is... Uh, Boy, one of the best reads you're going to find. I love villain books. I love team-up books. I love when you get all the villains together. I love me Catwoman, much like Nightwing. Catwoman is one of my favorite, favorite DC heroes. Again, this is a first issue that will make you want to read the entire run. Uh, to be 200% honest, I think a lot of people were really hoping that this was going to be the movie that uh, when they made uh, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, I think we all wanted to see Gotham City Sirens. Um, and there's still hopes of that, which is a big reason why this book is red hot. Uh, one of the reasons I'm, I'm showing you guys this one in a discussion about first issues. Uh, again, I know it's a more of a modern book, but this is a book everybody's after right now. And a lot of folks uh, aren't selling their copy because, uh, because there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of hype about this book, about this Trinity, uh, and uh, a lot of talk about this. And as I said, the book was just really, really fun to read. Um, and it's got a low print run. It's fairly rare. It stars Harley Quinn. So all these things uh, have really driven up the price and the demand on this one. 
We've got it for 75. You should grab it while you can because that's a great price. As we get into this uh, higher tier of books, the last couple books I have, I should say, frankly, uh, the next few books I'm going to show are books that uh, store guys like me aren't selling because because they're uh, they're they're really hot right now and they're appreciating and all that kind of thing. But it's cause these classics. I'm going to bring some awesome books. I want to bring some first issues to you guys. So this is one of them. Anything with these three characters is a book you want. Uh, and I'm skipping some of the best parts. Paul Dini, creator of Harley Quinn from the Batman animated series, uh, wrote this book, wrote the series. No one writes Harley Quinn better than Paul Dini. You could make the argument that no one writes anything better than Paul Dini. Uh, certainly Harley Quinn is that character. Uh, Poison Ivy and Catwoman might very well be those characters. Uh, a little like Chris Claremont, anything from Paul Dini is a book worth having and a book you need. So Gotham City Sirens. Uh, begin an adventure on the dark side of Gotham City, and it is just tons of fun. Uh, you get to know each of these three characters individually and as a team. On and on I could go, uh, but I'm trying to keep the show to a half an hour. So let's make it live. Gotham City Sirens, number one. Again, if you're interested in purchasing any of the books we're talking about, go to black-cat-comics.com. Click on shop, click on Kazi's Classics, and... Uh, Pick up these books because they're awesome. Give them a good home. And we're live. That's that one. Anybody grabbing any of these awesome classics yet? Not yet. Uh, they're waiting. They're waiting. Okay. So now we're getting into the big guns. Now we're getting into a couple of books that, as I said, I probably shouldn't be selling if I had any brains at all because they're heavily speculated. They're highly in demand. But I'm selling them, and frankly, I'm selling them a little inexpensively. This is the Sensational She-Hulk, number one. It's taken me 16 and a half minutes to say John Byrne, uh, because I forgot to show you the, uh, the back page of that Wolverine book. But John Byrne, writer and artist, John Byrne, my all-time favorite creator, uh, doing one of the most groundbreaking comics in the history of comics. And you're saying to yourself, what are you talking about, Kazi? Well, before Deadpool did it, before anybody did it, uh, She-Hulk broke that fourth wall like she is right there on the cover, telling you that if you don't buy the book, she's going to come to your house and rip up all your X-Men comics. Uh, and at the time, everybody had a house full of X-Men comics, so that was actually pretty funny. Uh, but like I say, she breaks the fourth wall in every other panel of this book. Um, and it's talking to you, the reader, throughout the whole thing. It's one part superhero, one part absolutely ridiculous, and two parts hilarious, uh, all with that wonderful, wonderful, uh, realistic John Byrne art. Love me some She-Hulk. Again, uh, she's got her show coming. Uh, there's there's all kinds of talk about uh, about She-Hulk. And, and again, this obviously isn't her first appearance, but this is the series where we get to know the She-Hulk that you know. We get to know the She-Hulk that they're going to have on the show. Uh, this is where you, uh, where you learn about Jennifer Walters. This spun out of uh, John Byrne's run on Fantastic Four when She-Hulk uh, replaced the thing during the original Secret War, which is a whole other offshoot of conversation that we don't have time to get into right now. Uh, but it was the peak of her popularity and she took Marvel by storm um, and everybody wanted to see more She-Hulk. Everybody always wants more John Byrne. Uh, so here it is. Sensational She-Hulk, number one. Uh, I think we've got it for 75, mm -hmm. um, which is a steal. Uh, this book can easily be a hundred bucks. Mile High is selling it for, for 300 bucks. Um, and uh and what can I say? Like I say, it's in high demand. It's 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 a heavy spec book. But the truth is, like all books I talk about on Kazi's Classics, it's just fun to read. Great stories, great art, and the book will make you laugh out loud. Like all the number ones I've talked about tonight, uh, it will send you on a journey uh, to enjoy dozens and dozens of great issues. Pick this one up. Pick up the trade paperback or the single issues. Like I say, you'll laugh out loud as he busts out uh villains from back in the day those one hit wonder villains that you thought you'd never see again like zemnu and different wacky creatures uh just really really fun and uh like i say before uh, deadpool was master of breaking the fourth wall it was all about sensational she hulk so let's go ahead and make it live it's a real gem and uh it's uh one of the things i'm happy to have in my collection is the complete run of this, like everything John Byrne. And we're live. 
five. And Machine Man number one is sold out. Nice. Good score with that Machine Man. Uh, Wild Sharks is asking me to tell them about the jump rope issue. Um, no, I'll let you Google that and, uh, and examine that for yourself. But it was tons of fun, and it's part of what I'm talking about, about what makes this series great. Um, and what makes John Byrne uh, both controversial and highly entertaining. Um, I don't remember which issue number that was, but it was part of this series, and it's a ton of fun. Uh, John Byrne, She-Hulk, anything She-Hulk. Pick up that original series. Pick up her time in the Fantastic Four. Whoever it was that grabbed that machine, man, good on you. Uh, anything from the king. Okay, so that brings us to the big gem, to the big gun. Uh, again, a book I should probably hang on to if I had any sense because it's probably going up in price while I'm talking. But this is Nova number one from 1978. And uh, like all the books that I've talked about, there are a thousand things that make this book awesome. Uh, not the least of which is what I've already mentioned, all the, you know, spec talk. And then we've seen Nova's in, in the movies and things, but we haven't seen Richard Ryder specifically. We haven't seen the Nova that we know. We've seen the Nova core um, in Guardians of the Galaxy and things, but everybody's been anxiously awaiting Richard Ryder. Everybody's been anxiously awaiting him being incorporated into the main MCU. And this is his first appearance in his origin. Um, there's all that that makes this book a, that something that belongs in anybody's collection. For me personally, uh, the reason it belongs in everybody's collection is because it's written by Marv Wolfman, the aforementioned Marv Wolfman, who uh, turned Robin into Nightwing. Marv Wolfman is, is hands down uh, on anybody's top 10, top five, maybe number one uh, writer of comics of all time. Um, anything like Chris Claremont, anything that says Marv Wolfman on it is a book you want. Anytime Marv Wolfman gives you an origin story, it's a book you want. It's going to be key. It's something that you that belongs in your stash. Uh, all of those things are great. Now, going back to the pre-Marvel whole uh, MCU thing. Uh, the Nova Corps is kind of like Marvel's Green Lantern Corps. And then for a long time, even though guys like me love Nova and, and, and the series is very fond, um, again, it's just sort of Marvel's version of the Green Lantern Corps. But as the years went on and then the quantum bands and then this and the, the Kree scroll thing, and, and, and it's really become much, much more fleshed out, much more Marvelized. Um, and then uh, Nova is, is a fairly unique character to the whole Marvel mythos. And he's gone through his changes over the years, but as the best heroes always do, they come back to their original suit and their original powers and all that kind of thing. If you're a longtime Marvel fan like me, uh, you love Nova. If you're a fairly recent Marvel fan, uh, you may not be as familiar with him, but you know him from the, the Annihilation books and all that kind of thing. Um, it's uh, just a great book. Uh, and now this is, uh, again, more of the traditionally marketed Kazi's classic. You know that when it says 30 cents up there, that's a classic Bronze Age book. Love, love, love me some Bronze Age. Uh, the Silver Age is, you know, that's that's my wheelhouse. That's a lot of people's wheelhouse. That's Lee and Kirby and, and all that great stuff. But in the Bronze Age, uh, you see a whole new wave of, of all-time, all-time great creators. Um, Marv Wolfman, Neil Adams, on and on and on and on and on and on. Uh, so Nova number one, one of the hottest, most spec books out there. Uh, really, really nice copy. I always keep things raw because because uh, comics are for reading. But if uh, that's your thing, hey, uh, knock yourself out because this is a good copy for that. We've got it at two hundred bucks, which again is a steal. Another year from now, this book is uh, going to be impossible. Whenever it is that uh, Richard Ryder shows up on a Disney Plus show. Um, it's, it's just going to go absolutely nuts and through the roof. Uh, would also chime in. We've got lots of other issues of this series on our website, black-cat-comics.com. It was a really fun book, like a lot of Marvel stuff. And, uh, and again, Marv Wolfman is uh, second to none. So let's go ahead and make it live. Nova, number one, really, really fun book. And if you're 100 years old like me, not just for the Archie comic, Nova number one. 
So that's a lot of great first issues, a lot of uh, introductions of new characters, a lot of some of the uh, greatest comic creators of all time, some of the, the more modern uh, great characters of all time. Nice, nice stack of books. Uh, as I said at the top of the show, these first issues are, uh, of course, a great place to start, whether you're uh, new to comics or you're a longtime comic fan uh, with the modern books. I'm always encouraging folks to pick up those image first issues. Uh, anytime you see a first issue, try that out. Uh, get a new character, a new world, a new creator, whatever it might be. And like I say, some of the ones we've talked about, some of the best. I I guess one last little thing I'd like to say is this week came uh, the Overstreet Grading Guide. Uh, as I said earlier in the show, you hear me throw around things like 8.5, 7.0, very fine, very good. And, and it all seems so mumbo jumbo uh, until you read an Overstreet Grading Guide. And it teaches you uh, all of those things. Why is a book a 4 and not a 4.5? Why is a book a 9 and not a 9.2? Well, you know these things when uh, you study and learn the Overstreet Grading Guide. If you're in collecting for the long haul, whether or not you're investing, whether or not you're, uh, you're planning on reselling the books, if you're into old books, into buying and enjoying classic comics, you need to know a little something about Overstreet, about the price guide and about the grading guide. They don't come out very often, these grading guides. So uh, go ahead and pick that one up. And uh, if you're a true hardcore geek like me, uh, you'll have a whole lot of fun reading about the different flaws that can exist on a book and all that sort of thing. So like I say, since it was out this week, seemed like a good little topic to throw out there during Kazi's Classics. So that's about all I've got for you. I hope it's been uh, fun formational. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. We do this the last Friday of every month, uh, Facebook and YouTube, uh, a little show called Kazi's classics. And then you can tune in tomorrow, Facebook and YouTube, as we come back to the present for Comic Shop Talk Live, which we do every Saturday. You pick up your new comics on Wednesday, you read them through the week, then you tune in on Saturday and check out Comic Shop Talk Live. We talk all about the new stuff. Because that's what we do here at Black Cat Comics. We talk comics, old comics, new comics. So go to black-cat-comics.com, click on shop, click on Cosmic Classics, take a look at the uh, books we've been talking about tonight. There's lots of other... Uh, gold, silver, bronze age books on the website. So take a look around, find some of those good ones. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time in a brand new show.